Hi, I'm a reporter with Ototech, mm -hmm. and I'd like to talk to you today about our Otowatch system. Mm -hmm. Otowatch system has several key components. One is the ENOS, a meteorological station. This information combines in a central processor to make plume patterns, plume predictions that allow an operator to see what their impact of odor is at off-site locations. Mm -hmm. This is a typical ENOS system. It draws air mm -hmm. from the above or near a odor source. It allows us to find the odor strength of a source and to find the strength of an odor at a release point. One or more of these may be placed at different releases across a plant so we can characterize the entire odor profile of a plant and that information then is paired up with the meteorological station. Mm -hmm. When that data combines, it comes and makes a plume pattern which uh, you can see the moving plume as the odor characterization of the sources is combined with the meteorology and uh, the plume is predicted. Which While kind of uh, model is uh, using here? Uh, the AirMod model is our core dispersion model mm -hmm. and it allows in the inf influences of terrain, buildings uh, to be factored into the analysis mm -hmm. so it's a great tool for accounting for all of the physical mm -hmm. things that can happen to a plume ne nearby. Mm -hmm. The uh, interface also allows us to define alert points, and I'm not seeing any on this particular face, but where you have sensitive populations, you can put a series of alert points and allows the system to send a message to the operator that a particular limit has been reached and that they should look to see what the cause of that exceedance is. Mm -hmm. Quite often we've found with this system that operators have been able to find very simple things mm -hmm. that need immediate attention and have given that attention that they can immediately take care of their problem. It doesn't always lead to a decision to install a lot more capital equipment, but maybe simply maintain things that they're already doing. That's a very powerful tool mm -hmm. to assure that they are having a impact, not adversely impacting the community. Mm -hmm and still maintaining and keeping a high profile, high maintenance level, and controlling odors. And how do you validate the data you get from the dispersion modeling? Do you have any way of validating the, the data? The, the dispersion model itself is an established regulatory model, and its validation has been done by comparing to standard reference databases. So mm -hmm. the model actually itself is pre-calibrated. But by looking at where the plume impacts are relative to where complaints are received from the neighborhood, you can draw a correlation between communities that have been affected and reported that they've been affected through past complaints versus where the plume is making its impacts. And uh, wh what do you measure? Uh, the stack or outside of the, of the uh, factory or what do you measure? We use the ENO to define the odor strength at or near the source. We want to use this to define the strength of the emission point because we want to make a direct correlation between our measurement and the point of the release mm -hmm. so that when we make a model prediction and say that release affects the community, we have a very strong connection between the impact, the emission point, and the measurement. If we put the sensor at the fence line, it could be affected by many things, and we don't really know then who is contributing to that point, particularly when more than one source may be in line along with the wind that's blowing toward that sensor. So mm -hmm. it's more rigorous, it's more defensible to keep this near or close to the emission point and have this define the odor strength of the source. So do you connect it straight away to the stack or is close to the stack or? It depends whether it's a stack or an area source. Yeah. So it, if it, it, is can area? Measure, it can measure directly from a stack, but if you have a, a clarifier weir or a aeration basin or a sludge storage area, then those might be open sources. So you would want to get this close to those areas as possible without interfering in operations yeah. or uh, you know, mm -hmm. what the operator needs to do to continue to run but the plant. Uh, how do you assure that uh, the patterns that you get in the sensors are related with others? We, in calibrating the ENOS, we collect samples of odor at the source that we're trying to teach this ENOS to replicate. 
And we take that odor sample and we take it to a lab for odor panel analysis using the standard methodologies for evaluating odors. And we then say this odor matches the instrument response. And so we actually teach it to respond to its the sensor. We teach the sensors to respond to the odor as picked up by the lab. Okay. And, uh, mm, but you, you, you might have um, uh, signals that um, might be correlated with other gases that are not odors. Uh, or you might have peaks that you, you, you might uh, mix with the... Uh, yeah, we have 16 sensors, so some sensors are going to play a more important role to characterizing the odor than others, but that's okay. By introducing that odor to the enos and teaching it that this fingerprint, whatever sensors are responding to, that's the fingerprint that correlates to this odor measurement, then as the sensors respond, it learns which which sensors are most important and will adjust its odor response accordingly. And uh, uh, which kind of, uh, you said 16 sensors, 16 right? 16 different sensors. And uh, which kind of sensors are you using for well, this? Well, they're a metal oxide sensor, but each sensor is respo it responds to a different functional group. Some are responsible to sulfides, some to amines, some to organic compounds. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's an array of response to a wide range of, of odorous compounds. Mm -hmm. So it gives us a, a broadest picture Broadest opportunity to find a wide to find a wide range of odors. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you using this this uh, this system uh, in, in in many places or you? We we have many applications at a variety of sources: wastewater treatment plants, landfills, compost facilities. Um, Animal, animal uh, body uh, rendering, rendering uh, plants. plants, yes, I yeah. knew that was a word for that. <laughs> uh, so we really cover quite a lot of uh, waste management sources and mm -hmm. some industrial processes. Okay, so uh, thanks very much for your attention. Glad it was you could, a glad a you could come by and visit us. Okay, and uh, thanks very much.